how are you positioning in Indian equities at the moment? We still like, and we still like Indian equities. Um, after the elections, there has been. Um, um, sorry, the expectations was that we're going to get the government that we have got at the moment. We think the economy will still do well. I mean, we are talking about 7% GDP growth going mm. forward. When we look, um, sort of as a reaction, let's go back to the question. As a reaction, I think this is what we're seeing from central banks globally now. We are going to see a whole raft of central banks doing this kind of, what do you call it, insurance? Insurance cut. <laughs> cut, because we don't know what's going to happen to um, economic growth. We don't know when it will bottom out and whether we're going to see um, um, expansion, global expansion in 2020, or that this is um, not in 2019, but maybe in 2020, an acceleration back again in growth. And to do that, central banks are doing what they're meant to be doing, which is ensuring that you don't get um, an accident while that is happening. Um, that to us is uh, that is to us is what central banks are doing at the moment. We did touch on India earlier, and you were saying, you know, this is sort of a move by global central banks becoming more accommodative. You do like Indian equities. Let's talk about another central bank that, of course, is in focus today for us in Europe, which is the ECB. And big questions over whether Mario Draghi can outdove the market when it comes to European equities. Mm -hmm. Is all the bad news priced in? I think quite a lot of the negative sentiments in Europe is, uh, has been going around the markets for a long time. Not only do we have um, the, the massive changes that we are seeing in uh, global auto markets, and, and that, I mean by that the, the um, emissions issues, um, electrification, actually changes into much more sort of hailing and sharing economy and what that does to the markets, plus the fact that a lot of the um, um, European economy is China facing and the more um, China um, worries are out there the more Europe seems to be um, getting the um, backlash from that on top of that we've got Brexit and sort of this um, un uncalculable event risk mm -hmm. affecting sentiment you've seen a lot of that being played out by the market however when you think about sort of innovation when you think about the economy itself um, you it will bottom out and they, and you will be able to find companies that you really like particularly in um, maybe the uh, smaller companies space mm. Um, Gideon, very quickly, I'm just noticing a story from Barclays this morning. They say the most despised market in the world, that's the UK, FTSE. They've changed their opinion. They've gone to overweight versus European equities, I should say. So long as you hedge the currency, say Brexit uncertainty caps the pound for now. Do you think that that's a similar kind of story or, or, or is it a bit early to make that kind of a differential between UK and Europe? European um, markets are um, um, outward looking, but there's a lot of exposure in the European markets to the domestic market. UK market, two thirds of the earnings come from um, earnings that are being made outside of the United Kingdom. We have had a lot of um, worries about domestic UK um, companies, but they don't really, really move the needle when it comes to the um, FTSE. It is um, a one-off event, whatever happened to Brexit, whether we go out without a deal, whether it is postponed or whether it comes to fruition a lot further than now or it ne doesn't happen at all. And for that reason, it's really difficult uh, to work out what to do with the UK market. So you go and look for the companies that you yes. like inside the UK. And these are and that's how you focus your attention do those companies uh, UK and Europe for you Gadir include banks people say to me they like UK domestic banks and we're looking at banks today because of the possibility of more details on Teltros from the ECB your thoughts on banks okay so um, what drives banks uh, two or three things uh, the first one is whether there is loan growth and that loan growth is sustainable and therefore you raise your um, your income what happens to your net interest margin and what happens to um, innovation and the ability to um, deliver your services cheaper and actually deliver services that are um, that are um, wanted if you backtrack from all of that, you will find that, for example, demand for loans will be dependent on, on, on global demand. Um, net interest margins uh, can be helped with, um, obviously, weaker central okay. banks, but it is all about demand.